Hey everybody, it's Eric with Amalytics. Uh, I want to show you a quick demo of this sort of open source rifle testing platform I've been working on. This is the first physical prototype. It's using all off the shelf components. And the goal with it is to come up with a way that anybody can kind of build something like this, something similar, you can modify it, um, and test a rifle to separate whether or not uh, your app, your rifle is having problems, your ammo is having problems, or you as the, the marksman are having problems. So it sort of separates, it removes the shooter from the equation to uh, to some degree. Uh, so I'll do a quick quick demo just to kind of show you how it works. So right now I have it set up with an AR platform. This is just like a lightweight irons only AR platform uh, that's mounted in here. Uh, I'm using this uh, little mount from the MK Machining uh, Magneto Speed mount that they have and it accepts both Arca Rail and Picatinny, which is pretty cool. So I can use this one mount and mount all kinds of rifles in here. So right now I'm mounted on the, a Picatinny rail. Um, you know, this is using just aluminum extrusions and some knobs and little adjustable feet. So there's two adjustable feet in the back here to, you know, kind of dial out cant uh, and also help you dial in elevation. Then there's one adjustable foot here in the front, which has another nut just to kind of lock it in place. So you kind of get the rough elevation hit with this, the coarse elevation with this, and then dial in the fine elevation and windage uh, back here just to kind of get the, everything set up straight. <clears throat> so once you're on target, you know, you can follow your prior rounds. So I have an empty mag here, uh, which I will show just because I know there's like some people who like to see that stuff. So you can see it's locked back, locked forward. So, you know, you imagine you're on target, bang, and then recoil, right? So boom, fires back to recoil. The point of this little bumper here, this rubber bumper, which is adjustable, is to put you back into the zero position. So wherever a zero was, uh, it kind of locks you back in place. And it's adjustable because here you can see, it, you know, I would be hitting the magazine if I had any more, more forward, which is not ideal. So I want to focus on shooting uh, clean, precise shots. So I have it all the way forward. I would not really I would use like the free recoil technique, just kind of keep my shoulder behind it without touching, pull the trigger, bang, let it recoil in my shoulder, push it back forward, kind of let the vibration settle out because there's obviously some wiggle here, and then take the, take the next shot. And hopefully that will give you nice precise, precise shots on target without you know introducing any shooter error. So, uh, but just sh to show you the versatility, versatility of this idea, so I'll pop this rifle out of here, set it aside. And then I'll mount my bolt action in here. So this has an arc rail on the, uh, this is a KRG, KRG chassis. So, you know, you install it in the mount and you want it to get it in the, the balance point of the rifle, which for me is, oops, right back here I think so pretty close to the balance point I need to open this up a little bit more the arc or rail there we go should be enough yep so you can see it's not it doesn't want to tip forward or backward the mount is loose and the rifle is balanced that's kind of what you want just to make sure that it isn't like twisting uh, which will introduce some air so I'm gonna dial this back in or tighten this back up okay that's tight enough and then this bumper I want to move. So, oh, another nice feature about this is if the rifle needs to come out, you can just slide this whole thing off, the whole guide rail, and the rifle will just sit there on the rail. Pretty nice. So now I can move this bumper, quick move all the way forward like this. <clears throat> Put the rifle back on. You know, you can obviously go to the range with it. Like this, your bag will just be a little bit heavier. It's all aluminum though, so it isn't too bad. Uh, if it is too bad, uh, maybe get some more PT. So uh, the other thing really quick is, this is a little lock nut. Um, it it came with a handle, which I installed, but the handle would just kind of, you know, like flop around, which is a little bit annoying and kind of got in the way. So just put a little lock nut on there and that locks the rail down so that, you know, if you want to dial out all the recoil and do like a super, super rigid mount, you could do that as well. So, but for now, I'm just gonna loosen it up a little bit. So let it slide naturally, push it all the way forward. You know, the my mag has clearance here. If you, you know, have a, you know, larger magazine, you might need to adjust the bumper settings and everything. Um, so I can get back on target here. 
have a chamber flags just to show you that there's no rounds in here. I'll show you the mag as well, just to, for the people who care. No rounds. Okay, we're good. We're good. So all the way forward, and I have a little bubble level. I'll turn these little knobs just to dial out all the cant. Yeah. I need to go this way actually. Can dial both at the same time just to speed it up a little bit more. Okay. And it's pretty solid. You know, obviously this is the, the first generation of this prototype and there's still some wiggle in here. Like I can perceive wiggle. Some of it's my bench moving. Some of it's the gun on this small mount that's in here. You could obviously stack up two of these mounts if you're using an arc rail. Uh, you know, the possibilities are endless. So, so anyway, once you get it kind of locked in, you know, same thing, have it push all the way forward, uh, so that it's in battery, my shoulder isn't touching, safety off, bang, into your shoulder, and then, you know, proceed it as necessary with your, with your test. So hopefully this kind of gives everybody the idea of the concept, um, you know, the grand total for all these parts was about $200. And most of that is, you know, it's just material costs. But anytime you get a cut done, they, they charge you for it. Um, I went through the 8020.net website. Actually, there's a local distributor near me who I worked with to uh, to give me a slightly better price, but still like what you'll pay is about, about $200 or so. And you can obviously customize this. Um, there are some operations I had to do myself. I had to kind of drill and tap these holes and add some additional spacers just to kind of lock these things in, get a little bit tighter so it didn't wiggle as much. But, you know, the tolerance is going to be what you'd expect for off-the-shelf nuts and bolts and parts like that. So these knobs are for McMaster. So uh, if anybody's interested in building one of these, uh, reach out to me, and I'm happy to, to publish the the parts list and just, you know, show you guys how to build one. Obviously, it's, it's not that many parts. If you have the parts list, you can probably figure it out. But if you have any questions or have any feedback on this, uh, let me know.